Good evening, everyone. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. Welcome to Alaska Weather with us on this 1st of February. As always, we encourage you to stay up to date with your local weather information. You can do that several ways. One of my favorites is to use the Alaska Weather Information Line, 1-800-472-0391. If you have the availability of a phone, uh, you can get to the uh, recorded forecast that way. Pretty easy stuff to use. I also like our website, weather.gov slash Alaska, and of course my favorite part is the TV desk section. Just click on the button when you arrive to this website here, or if you're coming in from weather.gov slash Juno slash Fairbanks or slash Anchorage, you'll be able to find the TV desk button as well. Just click on that, and in that section when you first arrive, you'll be able to find this show. It's in its recorded format, usually a couple hours after we first broadcast that through the KUAC UAF uh, system there, and also in... Uh, uh, KTOO out of Southeast and through the Alaska Public Network there and of course on ARCS. If you're not able to watch the show when it's broadcast in your community, you can easily watch it online if you've got uh, good uh, or decent internet access. It's on YouTube, so once you get to our website and find that link, subscribe to the service and it'll let you know that the Alaska Weather Show is available to be seen there on your phone or mobile device. Pretty easy stuff. You can watch it on your computer as well. If you can't find what you want, whether it's on the TV desk section or any other part of our web services, please do let me know. I'm happy to help in any way that I can. And I encourage you to give me your comments and suggestions about what we're doing with the Alaska Weather Show itself. Uh, we'd love to help. We'd like to make this uh, more relevant to what you're doing in Alaska, no matter what part you're watching from tonight. And, uh, you know, we can, we can fix things up for you. So please do let me know. And I'm, I'm always happy to talk to you and see you're a part of Alaska. Just send me a picture of where you're, uh, you know, where you're watching from tonight, and maybe we'll get that on the show. Let's take a look at the hazardous weather uh, for the region. Now we're going to start in the south, for areas south of Sitka, through Baranoff Island, Kaufman Cove, Point Baker, and Petersburg. You're in for some snow, maybe as much as an inch an hour, as we go through tonight and into tomorrow, about 6 p.m. or so. Uh, you're looking at about 6 to 10 inches of snow, and it should really come down at its heaviest through tonight and into the early parts of tomorrow, and then gradually taper off. But right now, winter storm warnings in effect for your region until 6 o'clock tomorrow. The Misty Fjords area, also under a winter storm warning. That means uh, you are in for some snow, and you know if uh, places like Hyder are going to see snow, we're not going to go uh, small. We're going to go big or go home. And that means about 12 to 18 inches possible for the Hyder region in the Misty Fjords area. So a winter storm warning for you, that'll go into Saturday. So it's going to snow in southern parts of southeast. What's going on? Why are we seeing so much snow right now? We've got a, a front draped across the Gulf. Uh, this is holding back cold air that just about the rest of Alaska is uh, under some pretty deep Arctic cold. Just to the south of that boundary, there's another boundary, and that is where we're holding back the warm and wet air that's uh, more of a subtropical nature. All of this, of course, has found its way to make a weather sandwich right over southern southeast, and it's a pretty efficient snow machine. Uh, that's going to continue again to sit over the region at least through tomorrow afternoon and probably into Saturday morning as well. So we'll see how much snow you get. But right now, uh, for some of the central and southern parts of the inner and outer coast, you're looking at about 6 to 10 inches, and then for the Misty Fjords and Hyder region, more in the order of 12 to 18. Up north, you see a little bit of yellow. That is the Klondike Highway in the White Pass region. Wind chill advisory is posted for you until Saturday morning. Wind chills could be as cold as 40 below. And that's important because at that level, frostbite can occur pretty quickly there. You're talking about uh, maybe as 30 minutes or less, probably less. Uh, so if you're driving in and out of uh, the Klondike Highway region, Make sure you've got some extra gear to stay warm, just in case, because, you know, if you're not prepared, that's when the bad stuff happens. If you are prepared, it won't happen. So do that. Prepare, put some extra stuff in the car, keep yourself warm, and let your friends know if they're driving in as well. We also know that the winds have been up across the northern parts of southeast for a while, maybe as much as a week or so, and it's been interrupting ferry service. So driving around southeast in general has been a little bit tough, but, uh, you know, that the wind is also playing a factor across the northern Lynn Canal. Storm warnings in effect there tonight. And it's also going to kick up some heavy freezing spray. Now, that's not a generally widespread occurrence in southeast in the wintertime, but it's a sign of how cold the winter has been in southeast. So pay attention to that. Make sure you're paying attention to the marine forecast and any warnings and statements there uh, before you go out because the wind certainly could do a number on you and your boat if you're caught up in some of that heavy freezing spray. So be extra careful out there. Just at least do it for me. Up north, we have a blizzard warning in effect for the eastern Beaufort Sea Coast. Uh, that will continue at least through midnight tonight. Winds will be gusting up to 45 miles per hour. Visibility is going to be the main issue there under a quarter of a mile on top of the wind chill, but uh, blizzard warning there. Not a whole lot of snow accumulation, but snow is falling because that is one of the criteria 
uh, for a blizzard warning, of course. So that'll continue up north. Here's a look at the satellite picture and see if you can find that weather sandwich across southern and southeast. You can see one boundary here and you can see a lot of cold here. I know this is cold. It doesn't look like a whole lot, but that milky white and very smooth picture is actually the satellite picture saying that's cold air. That's not cloud cover. In fact, most areas across the interior have been pretty clear uh, for the last several days thanks to that very dry air but one thing you can tell things are changing a little bit high pressure sitting here across the eastern parts of siberia wrapping around that northerly flow we have a huge cutoff high right here and this is slowly moving to the east so all that cold air is gradually shifting away the weather pattern will probably change here in the next week or so in the meantime it is cold rough tough and hard to bluff across the western yukon 1046 millibars there areas of snow and blowing snow for the north slope uh, high pressure across eastern Siberia at 1,043 millibars, and here is our weather instigator, a 992 millibar low across the central and southern Gulf, pushing that warm air up, and then we've got another boundary just kind of lurking right about here. Didn't really paint it on uh, the current weather picture, but as we go into tonight, you can see it there. Areas of rain and snow south of the Alaska Peninsula. Not to be forgotten, we do have a decent amount of wind moving across the Aleutians and snow showers uh, in the region there. Several waves of low pressure crossing from east to west. The general flow across Alaska right now is an east to westerly flow. And uh, that is keeping things pretty dry. The continental flow is what we call that moving off of Canada. And there's not a whole lot of moisture source back there, at least not in a big way that we're used to, like the Bering Sea and the Gulf of Alaska. So this is a very dry flow. And notice, if you watch the show with me, you know I love to talk about these black lines getting squeezed together. That's the pressure gradient, and as that pressure gradient squeezes together, that air has to flow a whole lot faster like rapids in a river. And that's what we have, that draining wind through the wind canal, and thus storm warning and also heavy freezing spray and wind chill advisories and a whole lot of wintry goodness there. The two fronts still sandwiched together across southern and southeast through the daytime tomorrow. We're going to get some decent snow out of that, and a lot of that, again, will fall probably tonight and into early tomorrow for some of our places around the Baranoff Island region to Sitka and out toward Kaufman Cove and, again, Point Baker. Uh, the Misty Fjords region will continue to see snow probably well into Saturday, and you can see that weather sandwich includes areas just south of Kodiak Island all the way out toward the Alaska Peninsula and the eastern chain. You get into a little colder air, though, as you get out toward the chain. That's uh, snow showers there while uh, you're probably flirting with rain and snow closer to Kodiak Island, but it looks like mainly snow for you as we go through Friday. Pretty cold stuff up around uh, the eastern sections of uh, Alaska into western Yukon and Whitehorse. A high pressure ridge is sitting right on top of you. That is where the most air is. A high pressure you can kind of think of like a dome or a bubble. And where we paint on that big blue age is the top of that, that dome. And that is where that most stable air is. And of course, uh, some of the driest air. And maybe clearest air if you're lucky and not getting trapped under some fog. Here's Saturday. High pressure is shifting to the south and east. You'll notice the ridge also kind of pushing northward a little bit more. That's making room for low pressure to work its way out of the North Pacific and creep its way into the southern bearing at 986 millibars. And everything else is doing the same thing. It's kind of lifting northward. You can see a 991 millibar low now between Castle Cape and Chignik. And 1,004 millibar low dragging in some more warm air, pushing that northward. And we're still talking about snow across central and southern southeast. And we're still talking about uh, high winds, or I'll say strong winds, across northern parts of southeast. That means Freezing spray could still be an issue in that region, and snow is also creeping its way northward towards southern parts of south central. Most of Alaska is going to be dry as we head into Saturday there. Watch for some areas of fog, generally in the upper Yukon, uh, let's say south of Arctic Village and around Fort Yukon, and then clouds will start creeping their way into Bristol Bay, Nunavak Island. St. Lawrence Island should still be generally clear, uh, but the Pribilovs, you're looking at a better chance for some rain and snow heading into Saturday. And looking like unsettled weather and windy weather around Kodiak Island. Maybe tough to get some of the planes in and out of there, for, at least for a time as we get into Saturday and Sunday. And showers, rain and snow there across the outer coast. That will continue through Saturday as well. So winter storm warnings continue for southeast. Pretty easy to see why, I think, with a weather sandwich there parked over your region. Uh, the conditions up north across the Kaktovik region and eastern Beaufort Seacoast should be improving before Saturday as high pressure is moving out of the way and this disturbance is sliding off into uh, northern sections of Canada and dry weather for everyone else. So it looks like uh, cold conditions will continue for most. Let's take a look at those temperatures since we're talking about that in the upper Yukon, in the upper Tanana Valley. That's where we're going to find the coldest. Remember that high pressure dome we were talking about? It's sitting right about here. 
Well, underneath that is where we get into that very, very deep cold air, anywhere from 30 to 40 below for nighttime temperatures and starting out tomorrow morning. In Fairbanks, you're looking at about 20 below. For South Central, into the Parks Highway corridor in Susitna Valley, anywhere from about 0 to 10, maybe 15 above. Down toward Homer and uh, Seward, anywhere from 5 to 15. Kodiak, you're looking at 32. Not too bad there. Uh, teens and 20s for most in southeast. Uh, getting closer to Craig and Kloak, you might hold into the mid to upper 30s. Same goes for Ketchikan. North Slope, anywhere from 5 below to about 15 below. Uh, in places like Kaktovik, where the wind is really going, it's not going to be quite so cold. Uh, Nome, uh, Norton Sound, Unilocleet, you're looking at about uh, temps closer to zero. Southwest, uh, plus side of zero for many. Bethel, maybe. Uh, holding on to some colder weather at 11 below. 20s and 30s for southwest. St. Paul and St. George in the 20s, waking up to uh, temperatures there. About 32 by the afternoon uh, for the west coast. Uh, most areas in the single digits and teens. Nome at 19. Shishmaref about 4. 6 in Barrow. Uh, 8 below in Arctic Village tomorrow afternoon. 5 to about 10 below in the Fairbanks region. South central, teens and 20s. 30s and 40s for the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island. Southeast, 20s and 30s. By Saturday morning, we're still talking about temps at 30 to 40 below for the eastern interior, south central, anywhere from 5 below to 5 above. Uh, Homer and Seward in the teens, 32 in Kodiak, again, teens and 20s for southeast. Nome at 18, Savunga at 18, or Nome at 8, Savunga at 18, southwest in the 30s and 40s. High temperatures on Saturday, well, it's still mild across southwest, uh, 30s and 40s there, and warming up in southeast as well. The interior, still cold. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Moving on to flying weather now, IFR conditions are expected across the North Slope and hit and miss as you get out toward Kodiak Island and along the Pacific side of the Alaska Peninsula and into the central chain as we start your Friday morning. We're also expecting snow across the southern half, especially the southern third of southeastern Alaska. It could be coming down fairly heavy at that point with a winter storm warning in effect as of earlier today. Uh, so that uh, will probably reduce visibility through a good chunk of the day. You'll notice improving conditions, though, from north to south as we go through Friday afternoon in southeast with MVFR lingering in central parts of the panhandle. Also look for improvements across the northern Gulf, but we'll be stuck with IFR across Kodiak Island and all the way down the Alaska Peninsula through the central chain and areas of MVFR across the eastern Beaufort Sea Coast and into the coastal plain itself with, as usual, most of the interior, south central and southwest looking pretty good in this type of weather pattern. For Saturday morning, IFR is still going to hover across the southern bearing and, and kind of pushes northward into the uh, Pribilof Islands and continues around the central and eastern chain, hit and miss on either side of Kodiak Island. Big improvements for central and southern southeast, back to VFR for most areas lingering MVFR around the Misty Fjords. And across the coastal plain up north, we're still talking about MVFR conditions there, but IFR seems to have left. Until we get back into Saturday afternoon, you might be looking at a little bit of IFR around Kaktovik. Southeast is looking pretty good. South central, the interior, southwest, and the west coast all looking pretty good for Saturday afternoon. IFR conditions, though, will be back for uh, widespread areas around Shelikoff Strait, Kodiak Island, all the way down the Alaska Peninsula and through the central chain. MVFR covering up many parts of the Pribilovs all the way out toward Bristol Bay and Cape Newingham on the northern extent. Here's a look at your pass conditions then. In detail, Anaktuvik and Adigan Pass, we expect to see IFR on the northern side and then improving toward VFR. Similar conditions are expected around Adigan Pass. The south side should be pretty good. The north side, you'll get into IFR fairly quickly. And look for improvements quickly through the morning as well. So the trend should be starting early. Lake Clark, Merrill Pass, all the way around to Rainy and Windy and Isabel Pass, of course, all looking pretty good. Uh, VFR conditions expected there all the way out toward Mentasta Pass and down toward Tanita Pass as we go through your Friday. Portage Pass expected to be A-OK, -okay. VFR conditions expected there. And Chilkoot and White Pass, as you saw on the northern end, OK, as you get down toward the Clarence Strait, uh, things will be just a little bit different. Freezing levels at this point show a bubble of warm air out across the eastern parts of Siberia. Those levels as high as 6,000 feet at this point. Most of Alaska is really uh, sub-freezing, though. This freezing line just south of the Pribilovs toward the Alaska Peninsula, south of Kodiak Island, and uh, most of it anyway, in the Kenai Peninsula, and then right across the southern end of southeast, where elevated warmth is seen anywhere from two, four, even 6,000 feet, and warmth spreads south of the stationary boundary, running right across the Gulf at this point. And it's the merging of that big cold and that big warm and wet air across southeast that's really turning up the snow machine there for you today and tomorrow. For Friday, we expect some possibilities of icing out across the extreme north and eastern part of the state around Kaktovik, generally below 6,000 feet. 
Uh, the bulk of the moisture available for it, though, is really at across the Gulf. You can see above 8,000 feet. It'll be limited here in southern and southeast since we're removing a lot of that moisture and, and concentrating that in the form of snow. But you go a little bit higher up, you may still run into a, at least some isolated moderate around uh, the Kodiak Island region down toward the Alaska Peninsula and the chain. Anywhere from about uh, now four, five to 6,000 feet and above, you'll start to run into some isolated moderate there. Most of the interior, south central, southwest, west coast, and even the northwest coast, uh, really not in any great icing risk at this point. Here's a look at the jet stream, but this looks a little strange to you. It does to me as well. High pressure sitting out across eastern Siberia, and it's got its own blocking high here. That means it's cut off from the main flow of the jet stream. It's just sitting there and spinning. If you ever watch a river eddy sometime and you see kind of a circulation there, but the main flows way out in the middle of the channel, that's what's going on here. We've got a really strong bubble of very stable, very cold air sitting in place doing whatever it wants, and, and it is. The north and easterly flow is moving across Alaska, but the main flow of the, the atmospheric river is well to our south, and you can see that just totally bypassing Alaska at this point. That's where most of the storm energy and most of the moisture is right now. As you look at 9,000 foot winds, here's that controlling feature of that northerly flow, anywhere from 20 to about 45 knots or so across the interior. A broad east to westerly flow across the Bering Sea, 45 to 50 knots there, and southwesterly is coming in. That's where that atmospheric river uh, is pushing those winds out across southeast, just barely grazing the southern parts of southeast. Winds are fairly light here at 3,000 feet, 10 knots or so north and easterly is at their strongest around the Alaska range, 40 to 55 and about 40 to 50 knots across the Aleutians. And in those regions, we should expect some turbulence below 4,000 feet, also around southwest, and hit and miss across southern parts of southeast below 6,000 feet with a little bit of isolated moderate. Riga. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm Dean Regas, astronomer from the Cincinnati Observatory. And I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. Whenever we talk about the winter constellations, Orion often gets top billing. This week, however, Dean and I want to give you some information about a prominent but not often explored constellation. That's right, James. This week we're going to talk about Auriga the Charioteer, the Pentagon-shaped constellation just to the north of Orion. And if you're into star names, Auriga has some of the coolest star names around. Let's show you. Okay, we have our skies set up for 7 p.m. facing east. High in the eastern sky, you'll see our old friend Orion the Hunter. We'll use the stars of Orion to find Auriga. First, look for the four stars surrounding Orion's belt of three stars. Betelgeuse and Bellatrix mark his shoulders, and Rigel and Safe mark his foot and knee, respectively. Then draw a line northward from Rigel through Bellatrix and you'll eventually reach a grouping of five bright stars forming a pentagon in the sky. This is Auriga. Greek legends say that Auriga represents Erichthonius, the inventor of the four horse chariot. Some people also saw the constellation Auriga as representing a goat herder with the three tiny stars in Auriga representing baby goats. In 1789, Hungarian astronomer Maximilian Hell took the stars of Auriga to make the now defunct constellation Telescopium Herscheli. He created it to honor William Herschel's discovery of Uranus in 1781. The brightest star in Auriga is Capella, and although Capella looks like a single star, it's actually a quadruple star system almost 43 light years away from us, containing four stars orbiting in two binary pairs. The stars in the first pair are giant yellow stars which orbit each other every 103 days. The second pair are two red dwarf stars that both orbit the yellow giant stars at a distance of over 10,000 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Ancient cultures put a great deal of importance on Capella. For example, the pre-Columbian civilization at Monte Alban built a structure aligned with Capella. The day before the sun passed directly overhead at Monte Alban, Capella would rise just before the sun. And if you're standing in the doorway in the front of the building, you would be facing Capella as it was rising. Let's check out the other stars of Oregon. Traveling counterclockwise from Capella around the Pentagon, we first have Menkalanon, an eclipsing binary system with two white subgiant stars. Menkalanon is 81 light years away, and its name is derived from Arabic and means the shoulder of the rain holder. The next star is Mahasim, 
Mahasim is 166 light years away. Its name means wrist of the charioteer, and it's also a multiple star system. The primary star is a white star five times the radius of our sun and over three times our sun's mass. Elnath is the third star in the Pentagon, and its common star shared with Taurus the bull. Its name means the bull's horn. Elnath is a blue-white giant star 131 light years from us and is over 700 times the brightness of our sun. The last star in the Pentagon is Kabdilinan, which means the shoulder of the charioteer. It's an orange giant star 490 light years from us, and this star is so big, its circumference is the same as the orbit of Mars. That makes Kabdilinan over 127 times the radius of our almost million mile wide sun. Before we go, Dean, we have to mention the kids. Your kids? No, not my kids, the kids. Oh yeah, the kids. Those are the three little stars near Capella. They form a cute little triangle with Almaz at the top of the triangle and Hades II and Satatoni at the bottom. Almaz is almost 2,000 light years away. Hades II and Satatoni are the baby goats being tended to by Capella, the nanny goat. Hades II is 243 light years away and Satatoni is 790 light years away. So, there you have it, a pentagon-shaped constellation with really cool star names to keep your tongue twisted. Keep, keep looking, looking up. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Time for a quick check of your sea ice edge. And of course, uh, we've really been filling things in around the Bering Strait in the last several weeks. However, some changes here across the west. You'll notice a few areas where concentrations have dipped below that 80% range north of the Bering Strait and west of Shishmaref. And also still north of St. Lawrence Island, still some marginal ice around here. Uh, some of the latest analysis there has uh, shown that we've got a little more ice working down the west coast but uh, it hasn't really progressed further south of St. Lawrence Island by much at all. In fact, some of that has changed substantially in the last couple days. There's still some marginal ice in Cook Inlet and outside of southwestern Alaska as well, so make sure you check the very latest at weather.gov slash anchorage slash ice for your sea ice edge conditions. Let's take a look at southeast. Remember, we were talking about wind in the region, and there's plenty to go around. The sustained winds in Stevens Passage up to 40 knots, 50 knots in the Lynn Canal. We have storm warnings in effect there tonight. Uh, that'll continue at least in part until tomorrow. Uh, gusts may reach upwards of 55 knots there across the Stevens Passage region. Winds subside a little bit as you move southward into Clarence Strait. Northerlies at 20. Gales up and down the west coast, or the, uh, the outside coast of southeast. And you can see northeasterlies coming off of Yakutat at 40 knots with a 9-foot sea. On Saturday, uh, gusts continue across the Lynn Canal and Stevens Passage, uh, anywhere from 55 to 60 knots there. And heavy freezing spray will be an issue in some of these regions, so uh, pay, pay close attention to that. Easterlies through the Clarence Strait. Uh, and uh, on the outer coast, 25 to 30 knots there with seas ranging from about 8 to 9 feet with that offshore wind, 12 foot seas though in the Lynn Canal on Saturday. So be careful up north and stay warm. Across South Central, Prince William Sound, you're looking at 15 knots with a 2 foot sea. Winds out of the north there. Northeasterlies in Cook Inlet, 10 to 25 knots. Uh, uh, stronger winds as you move south of Clam Gulch and Kenai. Uh, outside of uh, Kashemak Bay, 25 knots with a 9 foot sea. And then east of the Barrens, 10 foot seas are expected with 8 foot seas further up the coast. By Saturday, as low pressure starts to build in, the seas are coming up to 12 to 16 feet uh, south of um, uh, the Kenai Fjords region. Northerlies in Prince William Sound, northeasterlies through Cook Inlet. South of the ice, you're looking at 8 to 11 foot seas there on Saturday. For southwest, uh, 25 knots inside of Bristol Bay, 6 foot seas expected there. 13 to 14 foot seas across the North Pacific, uh, across the southern Bering, 13 foot seas with that northeasterly wind south of uh, Cold Bay and uh, west of Port Hyden. You're looking at 30 to 35 knots on Saturday. Seas coming up sharply as we get into Saturday. 20 to 21 foot seas expected across the North Pacific and around Kodiak Island. Look at what happens in Chelikov Strait and northerlies, the northeasterlies, 45 knots with a 13 foot sea on Saturday. There will be areas of heavy freezing spray there and also across the southern Bering and uh, west coast, so pay close attention to the forecast there. 30 to 35 knots across the region on Friday for the Aleutians looking at about 15 to 18 foot seas across the Bering Sea coast, 
and 17 to 20 foot seas across the Pacific with that uh, 35 knot wind across the region. Small crafts in effect for most areas there. Uh, 25 to 30 knots across the chain as we go through your Saturday. Anywhere from 12 to 13 foot seas across the Pacific coast and 15 to 17 foot seas across the Pacific or sorry, the Bering Sea coast with northerlies wrapping around from Kiska to Attu as we get toward the end of the weekend. Northeasterlies coming out of Norton Sound, uh, Nunavak Island. You'll notice this is all over the ice now. 11 foot seas around St. Matthew with a 30 knot wind. Also blowing in from the north and east to St. Paul and St. George. 13 foot seas expected there for Saturday. 17 foot seas. Easterlies come up just a bit more to 35 knots, 25 to 30 knots across many of the west coast. Up north, Expect lighter winds across the west coast. Winds will gradually settle down. Blizzard warning still in effect for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast through midnight tonight, but some improvement tomorrow. Westerlies over the ice and uh, a little bit of a variable flow here north of the Bering Strait. Northerlies outside of Kotzebue Sound, then that northeasterly flow over the ice blowing into St. Lawrence Island. A little bit of an easterly flow a shift there on Saturday. Otherwise, a southerly flow up the Chukchi and a westerly flow that's increasing once again across the central and eastern Beaufort Sea coast for your Saturday. So winds are coming back through the north slope. Once again, a recap of tonight's weather. Winter storm warnings are in effect for areas of the central and southern parts of southeast from the Baranoff Island region, the Kaufman Cove, south of Sitka, all the way down toward Port Baker and Petersburg. Expecting about 6 to 10 inches of snow there. The Misty Fjords region, including Hyder, expecting even more, 12 to 18 inches of snow. Snowfall rates may be on the order of 1 inch an hour in some cases there. Uh, the winter storm warning for the uh, inside passage and the outside uh, coastal areas is going to go through about um, 6 p.m. tomorrow for the Misty Fjords and Hyder region, though. That'll go well into Saturday. So plan on snow. Plan on wind in the north. A windchill advisory for the Klondike Highway and White Pass region. Could feel like 40 below there and heavy freezing spray and storm warnings posted for the Lynn Canal. And a blizzard warning is in effect now for the eastern Beaufort Sea coast through at least midnight tonight. Otherwise, it's just cold and generally clear for most of the west. Uh, rain and snow showers for most of the chain and south central areas near Kodiak and look for more of that as we get into Saturday. Thanks for watching Alaska Weather. See you tomorrow. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.